Hey nerds, this is Pam coming to you from Stationary Nerd. Today we're going to talk about a comparison I have done on these six journals, all that have 160 GSM paper. You're going to recognize a couple of them, like Archer and Olive, and Scribbles That Matter. But we've got a few new ones in here that maybe you hadn't heard about or didn't know that they made notebooks with 160 GSM. So, let's get into it. This is the pile that we're going to look at. All of this information is on a massive, I'm talking massive, you guys, blog post that's got pictures and charts and all of the features and all of the breakdown for how each one performed in all of the different tests. And then at the end, we're going to crown the winners and uh, go over which ones I think that you should purchase and which ones I think you should not purchase. Okay. All right, I just wanna jump in here real quick before we get started on this review um, or get too far into it. And first of all, I wanna apologize. This video is so long, oh my goodness. Um, but we had a lot to cover. We're actually reviewing six notebooks here. So if you want to jump all the way to the end and find out the winners and the losers of this entire comparison, I'm going to leave the um, timestamp here so that you can scroll all the way to the end of the video and see the results without having to go through all of the testing and the review of everything. Of course, you're gonna miss the cameo appearances by Jack and Pounce, but sometimes that's necessary. Okay, back to the normal video. Let's start with Archer and Olive. There's been a million reviews. Actually, let me just get these out of the way so that we have a clear um, path to look at these. So Archer and Olive. This notebook, you've got it a gold embossed B on the front and each of the notebooks in their line is different and you've got several different colors to choose from on the cover. You've got some floral patterns um, and that type of thing. So you start out with a page that has you know, your contact information and then you go straight into the dot grid. The dots are actually a light gray and they're kind of medium to light on the page. No page numbers at all. And then you get to the end and you end with, we have a kitty. You end with the last blank page. There's a back pocket and the gusset on that is ribbon. And then you've got two bookmarks. And these bookmarks are a satin ribbon. Let me just show you those. This is Pounce and Pounce is making everything bounce, I'm sorry. So you've got satin ribbons to match the cover color. And then of course you've got the bookmark or the, uh, what's this called, pen loop, and then the elastic closure. So those are the features, nothing special, no extra pages, uh, no index, no pen test page, and again, no page numbers. So very run of the mill, just the, uh, just the basics in this one. So. Let's set that aside. And yes, Pounce is just gonna lay right here. And we're just gonna let her for now because she's gonna go away. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> she wants to be petted. Okay, so in my quest to find as many a, um, 160 GSM notebooks that I could, I found this one on Amazon. This is the Key Hang Stationery brand. And this has 160 pages. Oh, I should probably tell you, this one has, I forgot to give you the details. So this has 112 pages in the B6 size. The A5 and the B5 size have 160. And yes, they do come in three different sizes. There's also a planner version that's got the um, planner pages already printed. Um, let's see, there's a sewn binding, fabric cover, 
uh, two bookmarks, pen loop. Okay, so I covered everything and I did pay $35 for that once I paid for shipping. Okay, so key hang. Oh, pounce. Okay, it, you're gonna have to go, all right? Let's go. Okay, so key hang. Um, the, uh, this is on um, Amazon and you can see that the Seller is called this, whatever that is, S-E-Q-E-S. -E -E I'm not sure that it's pronounceable. I think it's just random letters. But if you're searching on Amazon, that's the name of the seller, and that will help you find them. So this has 160 pages. Um, the dot grid is 39 dots down by 27 across. 160 pages, two satin book bookmarks, and this is the gray cover, so the bookmarks are gray, a dark, and a light. Um, there are several different cover options, um, and the, there's options for this linen um, fabric, and there's also a PU leather um, option. All of them have different animals on it. Some of the animals are kind of weird, like this ant, although if you read the blog post, I go into probably a little bit too much detail about why I like ants and what they stand for and how they're a good representation of the kind of character that we should have, hardworking and team player, that all that kind of thing. So bookmarks, elastic, pen loop, and the um, document pocket in the back. Same gusset with the f fabric or with the ribbon. And then same here, just contact page and then straight into the dotted pages and no numbers. So same kind of configuration as um, Archer and Olive, no bells and whistles, just the notebook. All right, Teku Core. I'm not going in any order. It just happens to be this is the, the order of the pile. All right, so just ignore the fact that the gold emblem on the front is uh, kind of worn out. I wanted to see how hard I had to scratch and beat this emblem up before it started to show wear and tear. And uh, the folks at TechuCore actually asked me to test the durability of that. And I'm going to tell you, I was scratching pretty dang hard on that and it held up to my abuse. So I'm impressed. Okay, so the thing that I love about Teku Core on all of their notebooks, you've got an extra wide elastic, and you can see the width there compared to a normal elastic band. All right, and then in the back, you've got a pocket. You've got a beautiful end paper here that matches the emblem on the front. And there's a back pocket with a ribbon gusset that is matching the cover color. And then you've got three bookmarks that also coordinate with the cover color. I believe all of the cover options come with the gold and the white and then the other color matches the cover color. Say that five times fast. So we've got navy blue, gold, and white. And we have page numbers. And I like that the page number sits outside the margin of the grid and um, the dots are light, but not so light that it's too light, and they're small, and the book does open flat once you just train that spine a little bit. All right, so let's just take a look. 39 by 27 dots, and it's got 192 pages. This notebook has more pages than any of the others that I reviewed and in, in fact the 192 is the same amount of pages that you get if you buy the 100 GSM version of Teku Core. Oh, let's see here. This is A5 and it's true A5 size and it does come in three colors. Um, let me grab those. Okay, so the three colors that you have and these two of them are unopened so here's another blue one this is a olive green one and on the front is the um, lotus leaf 
and then the maroon or burgundy one has a fern leaf they put the emblem on the belly band so that's what that looks like and guess who's back okay so the other good thing about teku core is it comes in this really nice box that's very thick and it's great for storing your notebook on the bookshelf after you're finished um, I have these because TechuCore sent me these ones to do a giveaway. So we're going to do that um, probably on Facebook and Instagram in the coming days. So keep an eye on those accounts. Um, this one I actually purchased with my own hard-earned money. I beat TechuCore to the punch because I bought this on the very first day that they had it because I had an alert set up because I knew they were coming and I was watching for them. And then a couple of days later, they emailed me and said, hey, they're up for sale. I'm like, I know, uh, it should be delivered today. So they sent me some, I'm gonna share with you guys. So watch for that. All right, scribbles that matter. This is the pro version. The icons are very, on the back and very small. And you can see that we've got an elastic band, we've got a pen loop, we've got a back pocket, and again the end paper has a decorative finish which matches the icons on the back. Okay, so inside of Scribbles That Matter, just like their, um, all their past ones, you've got the extra pages. So you've got the um, contact info page on the inside. This is a heavy cardstock first page. And then you've got the key, and then you've got one, two, three pages of index. So what's interesting is the index pages and the special pages are numbered. So now we're still in the index and we're on page four. And then the first page of the notebook starts at page number five. You can see that the page numbers do fall outside of the margin and it looks like they've got an extra line of dots here along the very edge of the margin, which translates to um, scribbles where are you so they still have t um, 39 by 27 dots um, in here so oh wait let me finish this um, the back has the mindfulness page and then a pen test page um, I don't know why I never use the pen test page um, I always go a couple in but here's what's interesting. So this is the back cover. Here's that last page. It's numbered at 159. So the last usable page, if you skip the back side of your pen test page, you are at 155. So you actually have 150 pages of usable notebook um, because they have numbered all of their special pages. So. That's always a bummer. All right, so that is the charcoal color and that is the pro version. Oh, did I mention that there's a rivet on the back of that too <clears throat> to hold that pen loop in? All right, so Buke. I was almost finished with this review, you guys, and then all of a sudden I was browsing AliExpress because, you know, that's what I do. I browse AliExpress to see what new stationary stuff I can find. And this caught my eye. Um, the, um, the notebook company actually works with um, retailers or shop owners to create custom notebooks. So say for instance, um, Amanda at Eclectic Scribbles wanted to have a custom notebook made, which is what she did here. I'm not sure if she went through this company or not, but um, the, the way that it works is this notebook is not manufactured by Amanda. It's manufactured by a factory in China, and because actually China is where almost all of the notebooks are manufactured because they've got the system um, for manufacturing. So anyway, Buke is actually the notebook manufacturer and they work exclusively with brands 
to create custom notebooks with you know their custom logo and um, you know whatever they want on the inside however they have also started selling their notebooks um, and you can get them on Aliexpress they come in hardcover or soft cover and all of it is this really soft touch PU leather or fake vegan leather and then these are called the owl bullet journals which means they've got this owl emblem on the front and this is embossed so I'm not sure if you can see that yeah actually maybe so it's actually indented into the leather and it is very crisp actually I'm pretty impressed with the way that that looks and the more I see this little owl the more I like him um, I usually don't like branding on the covers of notebooks but hey I love it okay so it's got an elastic closure and it's got a back pocket the thing that I notice is it's right up against the, the spine of this so I don't know if that's good or bad just an observation We've got um, a ribbon gusset, we've got an elastic pen loop, and we have one bookmark in here. And this is actually gold um, grow grain ribbon. Um, the dots are, I would call them a medium um, color, and they're a little bit more obtrusive on the page than some of the others and there are no bookmark or there are no page numbers and you can see that this goes all the way to the very end of the page and so that translates to 27 by 40 on the dot count um, the paper in here is probably the most ivory of any of them so just a comparison here's the um, Here's the scribbles that matter versus the buke paper. It's not super noticeable, but it is a little bit more on the ivory side instead of on the white side. Um, this also comes with, okay, so first let me just cover this. You open the front cover and there's nothing there and nothing there and you go right straight into the notebook. There are no page numbers. And then when you get to the end, you are at the very end with no special pages. However, they include this cool sticker. So this gives you the information about um, when you started and when or who it belongs to. And so this is where you can put your contact info. What I like about this separate piece is instead of it being here, what if you actually wanted it here? and this will allow you to put it wherever you want and so maybe when you open this book you want something decorative here instead so that is a good bonus i think and that it also comes with this cool little stencil not super high quality but you know what it does the job it's got some cool um, features on here and i think that it's a nice little bonus so all right so that is buke all right and eclectic scribbles all right we've got an elastic band this one is thinner than most of the others and it's very stretchy so um, not super secure on there which i guess that's fine um, and on the back you've got a pocket now this pocket again has the ribbon but look at how short it is it's much shorter on the page than what you see in other notebooks. I don't know if that was designed like that on purpose. Uh, it's not good, not bad, so it's just an observation. Uh, we've got a pen loop, and that looks pretty secure in there. And then when you go to the first page, there is no contact information here either. So what makes this, oh, Let's talk about the bookmarks because we have a little bit of a problem here. Let me get rid of this belly band. No, Jack, no. All right, so we have two satin bookmarks and these are in black to match the cover design. So this one is fine, um, no problems at all. And, um, this one, not so fine. Jack. All right, so 
This is normal. That's normal for a satin ribbon. Okay, Jack, I love you too. Now, let's get you off of the table. So, sorry, I knew the kitties were gonna be freaking out. All right, so we have a lighter and we have a ribbon with a fray. So satin ribbons, that's what they do. And there is an easy way to fix it. And I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see what I'm gonna do. It's super easy and it, I am not gonna burn the house down, so don't worry. All right, so you just take a lighter and you hit the end of that with a flame and it's gonna melt the satin and it's gonna um, seal off that end. So fire, there we go, done, done and perfect. So no more problem. Um, so I do not fault this at all for happening. Um, that's just how satin works. And, oh, sorry, let me zoom back out here. Um, and um, now you know how to fix that um, without any problem at all. Okay, so we have another issue that we need to talk about regarding this. Whoops, I have ribbon on my nail. Okay, so this notebook looks pretty blank, doesn't it? So the problem that we have is these dots are so tiny and so light that you can barely see them unless you're right up on that notebook. We're gonna compare that. So Scribbles is, has dots that people pretty much recognize and know. So we're just gonna compare them so that you can see the difference in dots here. So you can see how light the um, eclectic scribbles is compared to the scribbles that matter. So, all right. So that was a really long introduction to the six notebooks. And now we're going to talk about the testing that I have put these through. I'm sorry for the camera shake. It's gonna be very annoying until I get that fixed. <sighs> So let's take a look at the art supplies that I used, um, or all of the supplies that I used to test these notebooks. By the way, this um, spreadsheet, it is on the blog post, so you can compare all of the stats for um, all of the notebooks side by side, and then you can also see how much I paid for each one. I guess I didn't really cover that, did I? So TechuCore, or no. Uh, Archer and Olive, I paid $35 for. Eclectic Scribbles, I paid $21 for. Uh, scribbles That Matter are 20, oh, this one was 20, this one's 21. Um, AliExpress, $10.49, not bad. Um, TechuCores, $26.95, and Keyhang, is $15.99. So that runs the gamut from $11 all the way up to $35. Um, so definitely um, a huge factor in deciding which one to get. Okay, so I'm gonna just cover all of the supplies right now. So I'm just gonna go over quickly the different pens and art supplies that I used in the testing. So there's 16 different items on the pen test page and I tried to include all different kinds of pens so that we could get a good representation from all the different categories. So I've got um, fine liners, I've got gel pens, I've got um, a ballpoint pen, uh, fountain pens and also a couple of markers. The Sharpie and the Copic marker wa uh, were kind of outliers there that I wanted to test to see how it performed. And then a series of brush pens and highlighters 
and the metallic pens. <clears throat> when we get to the art supplies, I've got a variety of inks and paint. So alcohol inks and acrylic inks and dye-based inks are all being tested. Uh, I'll just give you a spoiler, every single notebook failed on the alcohol ink, so that was completely to be expected. But I also swatched out some fountain pens, or fountain pen ink, and then also those two markers again. And of course I needed to give it a good test on watercolor, two applications, a wet version and also a drier version. One I let air dry. One I dabbed with a tissue as soon as the color was down. We did this in two ways. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different um, art supplies. So I gave a score of ten points per art supply and um, that's how we came up with the scoring system. Let's go through each one, one by one and um, take a look at the results for each. I don't know why I put that elastic back on. I meant to put it back here. Okay, so I have, let's do the um, writing first, the pen test. So here's the front of this. This is the Archer and Olive. Uh, we've got noodlers here and I want to just show you hopefully that will yep notice the yucky feathering on that we don't like feathering at all all right so let's take a look at the back side of this and see how we did so not too bad actually I'm gonna just zoom in so I don't have to hold it up every time and make it all wobbly for you all right so we did pretty good um, it performed about like what I expected. In fact, all of them, the pen test um, performed pretty much as expected in all of them. So the two alcohol markers, so Sharpie and Copic, didn't, um, didn't make it, but all of the rest of them did. The Noodler's Ink, we've got a little bit of show through and kind of wanting to bleed through a little bit, but um, that was the only indication that there was a problem on any of them. Come on, autofocus. There we go. Oh my goodness, that was hard. Okay, so um, now let's take a look at the, um, actually let's take a look at the feathering test. So the platinum, we have a little bit of feathering here. We've got feathering. I'm hoping the camera picks that up. If it doesn't, take a look at the blog post because you can see very clearly the um, feathering issues that we've got with this Noodler's ink. And then also here with the, what is this ink? I think this is J. Herbin um, Turquoise. All right, so we have feathering problems in our Chernolov, which is horrible. It's a very bad thing. Our Chernolov, bad, bad, bad bad feathering. You are actually the only one that failed the feathering test. So this is the pen test or the art supply test. This was actually my first one that I tested so it's kind of messy. The rest of them are a little bit better. So we have all of the supplies. You can see feathering pretty badly here again but then we've got all of the rest of the supplies laid out and labeled and again if you want to look at these really close up I have a lot of pictures on the blog post. So, and so let's go over what we see here. The Dilusions um, ink is a water based ink and should not be bleeding through. It not only bled through on when I put it straight onto the page, but also when I diluted it in water. Um, this is the Noodler's fountain pen ink. This actually bled through as well. Same results here on the markers. And then this is the alcohol ink that I said every single notebook failed. But look at what we've got here. We've got not only did it fail, but it also bled through to the very next page. And um, that 
fled all the way through to this to the back of that second page so they got points taken off of their performance for that and you can see also the dye based ink did not perform well this is what surprises me the most this is ridiculous this is watercolor and look it's not even thick but what I did was I tested two kinds of watercolor so this was a more wet application and I let it air dry and then this is another application of watercolor but it was a little bit drier not as much water and once I laid down the color I dabbed it with a tissue to soak up any extra water so the drier application was fine but look at this this is horrible this is horrible um, yeah so bad 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 so Archer and Olive you failed six and a half of the ten art supplies so that gives you a score of 38% on art supplies bad not good at all okay we are going to you know what let's actually look at scribbles that matter next so I'm very disappointed again but I'm gonna I'm gonna save my disappointment rant until uh, we get to the next section so pen test um, we have all of the pens that we've already talked about and I also did the fountain pen test and we did pretty good um, no um, excessive um, bleeding or feathering with fountain pens and the paper was um, fairly smooth to write on a little bit of tooth but it wasn't horrible okay and so on the back side of this we have pretty much the same exact results um, a little bit of bleed through and um, exactly what we would expect from the Sharpie and the Copic um, otherwise not so bad Okay, so pen test about what ex is expected. Okay, so this big mess right here, I'm sorry, I accidentally spilled this ink, and so not only did it go here, but we've got, you know, several pages. I, yeah, I was a slob. So ignore the excessive mess on this one. Um, so we have all of the supplies here. And then here is our problem. So again, you can ignore these two things, but, um, and you can also ignore this one because this is on the back side of that. So we have the Delusions ink bled through, not only to the last page, but also to the following page. The alcohol ink, again, bled through, but not as badly as it did in the Archer and Olive. Um, the dye-based ink actually bled through more here than it did in Archer and Olive. And then we have a problem with fountain pen ink, and again, the two alcohol markers. And again, we have the same exact problem with watercolor seeping all the way through the page and causing havoc. Um, and it's actually rough. It's like the, the fibers of the paper have soaked up that water and now you've got that rough feeling of you know like what happens when paper gets wet so that was an issue scribbles that matter failed seven and a half so one more failure than archer and olive which gives them a score of 28 percent scribbles or eclectic scribbles is our next one all right, so something I didn't cover on this that I want to make sure that you guys realize that this cover is kind of a vinyl kind of feeling. I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel like PU leather, but I guess maybe it could be some type of synthetic leather. Um, but the artwork on the cover here is actually designed by Amanda. She's got three options in her shop. One is this one, one is the Zentangle one that's got a little bit of a splash of color, and then one is a really cute steampunk kitty cat that is pretty adorable as well. So what I love about this cover is that these mandalas are screaming 
for some Sharpies. So I have pulled out my supply of um, ultra fine Sharpies and take a look at this, you guys. You can color the cover whatever color you want and look at how amazing that is. And because it's a non-porous surface, the Sharpies are gonna um, sit on here and it's not gonna rub off at all. So that would be a fun art project. I love it. Okay, so look at how the watercolor pools beautifully on this paper. It is awesome. And then when you get to the back, no watercolor stains at all. And then you have, again, the alcohol ink has failed. And a little bit of the dilutions have failed uh, where I put it on straight, uh, straight out of the bottle. And then the Apache, Sun Apache Sunset um, also failed. However, I did use a paintbrush on this sample. I think the other ones I used a Q-tip, so this might be a heavier application than the rest. So I kind of gave them a little bit of leeway on this. And then the markers here, the Sharpie that um, passed the test on the writing sample. This is actually three or four, one, two, three, actually five or six passes with the Sharpie. So that's what it's gonna look like once you start scribbling with the Sharpie on multiple layers. So. Um, eclectic scribbles did really well in fact the um, score that they got so I counted them as four and a half um, art supply failures which gives them a good score of 55 percent by the way every single one failed the alcohol so the only the pot the top possible score on the um, art supply is only 90 percent um, because everybody failed that one and yet, if I were a teacher, I would probably score that on a curve, but I'm not, so that would require me to do math. Okay, so Buke, we are going to take a look at your um, pen test page. And again, this is all of the items. So what I noticed the most about the paper in this is it's very, very smooth. This was a super smooth writing experience. In fact, I think, oh shoot, I completely forgot to show you this. I'll pull this out while I'm talking. So the, um, the paper here is so smooth and I loved writing on it. And that was actually one of the notes that I wrote down for myself is that it's like buttery smooth writing experience. And that was a huge bonus for these guys. All right, so inside, I forgot to tell you this, so inside the belly band of this is a cool little cheat sheet. So you've got, I don't know, some national treasures from around the world. And then you've got a diameter, um, paper. it's a compass. I guess you punch a hole here and then you can use it as a compass. And then this is um, a little cheat sheet to show you angles. And then here you can see line weights. So it's got a nice little um, handy uh, reference thing inside the label itself. All right, back to the testing. All right, so this is where we had a little bit of problem. This was the only notebook that has ghosting. You guys, I don't even understand. So you can actually see here that you can see through the page and see the ghosting onto the other page. But look at the Sharpie. It barely bled through. And same with the Copic marker. It barely bled through. But you can see the writing from the other pens to the other side. So it's really strange that this has so much ghosting. Um, the only thing that I can figure is this is 160 GSM paper, but because it's got such a, um, a heavier coating on it than any of the others, coating on a paper is actually adding weight. So it's weighed after the manufacturing process um, or the manufacturing process is designed so that it comes out at a certain weight. So I'm wondering if the heavier coating on this is, is actually applied to a thinner paper to begin with, which is then why we have the, um, the ghosting that we have here. I mean, it's not horrible. 
this would be completely acceptable in a 100 or even a 120 GSM paper notebook. Um, but in a 160, I kind of expect absolutely no ghosting whatsoever. But the, um, the art supplies in this perform outstanding. But let me, before we get there, I'm just going to um, bring you over to the fountain pen test. So here I actually wanted to test some shading on this paper. Um, I use the Apache Sunset in a, don't even know what journal or what pen, probably a Jinhao 599. But the shading on this is beautiful, so that means that it is um, sitting on top of the page. And I actually write here that it is buttery smooth and very similar results on shading to Tomoe River paper. So fountain pen people, you're gonna love this notebook. All right, so let's do art supplies. All right, so all of the usual suspects here. And let's take a look at the back. We do have ghosting again, but we have some really good results here. So alcohol ink failed as always. Um, the dye-based ink, that pretty much bled through as well. Not as much as it did in the, uh, scribbles, but it did bleed through. And then the two markers, um, not terrible bleed through. Some ghosting, some really bad ghosting, obviously. But um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not horrible, actually. Um, but you can see, here you can see this is where the fountain pen ink is. You can see the ghosting up here. So the ghosting is a problem, but the art supplies hold up really well to this paper because of that coating blocks that blocks the a majority of it from uh, bleeding through. Okay, so Buke had four out of the 10 fail, which gives them a score of 60%. That is a really good score. And if you're keeping track, that puts them in third place. All right, so Teku Core, you are up next. And we have, you know, I really just love the feel of this notebook because it's got more pages than any of the others. It just feels more substantial in your hand. I mean, look at the difference between the thickness here. And you can see that we have um, definitely a much thicker notebook. Um, I love the way it feels and the fabric on it is just feels luxurious. Yes, I'm a fangirl. So much love for Teku Core. Okay, so, whoops, sticky notes sticking. All right, we're gonna look for our pen test page. Okay, here we go. Man, somebody is grilling outside and I can smell it and um, now it's making me hungry. It smells like steak. All right, um, here we go. The usual suspects and zooming in here on the Jinhao X75 with noodlers, you see no um, issues at all with um, feathering. Looks good. Um, so let's take a look at the back side. We have a very good result here. Again, Sharpie just barely um, ghosting a kind of a couple of spots here where it wants to bleed through, but not bad at all. Very good results. We do have a little bit of a shadowing here with the, uh, the Jinhao 750 and the Copic marker performed really well as, as well. So, very good, Tekukor. Okay, let's do art supplies next. So, same application as all the rest. I kind of think I was a little bit harder on the watercolor than I was on anybody else, but um, we still had pretty good results. So, here we go with Tekukor. We have about three and a half failures. So the alcohol ink, Copic and Sharpie, we're gonna call those failures. The um, dye-based ink is ghosting, but it has not bled through at all. 
And then the Apache Sunset just kind of sort of started to bleed through. But this was another one that I applied with a paintbrush, so I think that this was a thicker application than the others. And then just kind of a little barely showing through on the... Um, okay, so this means that we have on Tekukor, I'm counting this as three and a half, one, two, three, and a half. And um, that gives us a score of 65. Good job, Tekukor. So that's the number two. And so here we are, number one. All right, Kihang, first place notebook. First place gold medal goes to you. All right, our, uh, the camera battery is running low, so we're going to speed through this one. Well, probably not because I tend to talk a lot. All right, we are starting with the pen test page, same as always. And then we also have the fountain pen test, no feathering at all. Very good performance there. And then on the back, we are looking at one. One failure, which is the Copic marker. You can see ghosting on the Sharpie, but look at that. Basically nothing. So that is very impressive on Kihang. You guys, this is an amazing result. Woo! All right, so let's look at their art supplies. All right, so all of the usual suspects. Notice this I actually applied with a cotton swab. And then look at how heavy-handed I was with this watercolor. That's a little crazy. Um, and the paper is not buckling at all. All right, and this is what we have. Amazing, huh? So we've got three failures. We've got the alcohol ink, as we expect. We've got the um, dye-based ink, and then we've got just kind of not even barely enough to talk about bleeding with the um, fountain pen ink and I didn't even count that against them and then the Copic marker and again look at how heavy I put that this is like seven or eight strokes of the sharpie marker and nothing just a little ghosting no bleed through at all awesome we have Kiang. You failed three of the art supplies, which gives you a score of 70%, which puts you in first place. So 70%, 65%, and let's zoom back out here. So these are our top three. Kiang, Tekukor, Buke at the top. 75 or 70%, 65%, 60% on the art supply test. Um, and then in the lower tier, we have eclectic scribbles, scribbles that matter. And in absolute last place, we have Archer and Olive. All right, we're going to go over the overall scores next, but my battery is dying, so I will be back in just a moment. Okay, we're back. It's the next day. I have a full charge on the battery and I've actually gone through and edited the whole first part of this video and wow, this one is a long one. So if you have hung in here for this long, honestly guys, I love you. You're awesome. All right, let's finish this off. So this entire review, I have used um, five criteria. No, yes, five criteria. One, two, three, four, five criteria to judge all of them. And then each one had a, each of those criteria had a possible score of 100. So we've already talked about the scoring for the art supplies, but we're going to talk about the final scoring for all of the other ones. Construction and durability, 
We have features and specs, the writing test with pens, the art supply test, and then how the paper performed for feathering. So let's just go over the final scores for everybody. We're going to go quickly because you can see all of this on the blog post and look at everything in more detail. Okay, I am gonna lay these out one by one. I've had to zoom the camera way up high so we can get them all in the same shot. So let's try this. We've got Archer and Olive. We've got a score of 55%. We have Scribbles That Matter with a final score of 67%. We have Eclectic Scribbles with a final score of 74%. We have Buke Notebooks with a final score of 77%. And we have Teku Core with a final score of 84%. And finally, we have Keyhang Notebooks with a final score of 90%. Now, of course, you can see all of these scores on the website and how I came to these final scores and what went into each one of those. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below in the comment section and we will chat about the results of this big, massive 160 GSM notebook review. What do you think? Did I do good? Um, are there notebooks that I totally missed that I have not discovered yet. I'd love to hear if you know of another brand that's got 160 GSM paper. Um, obviously I didn't go for sketchbooks, which that's kind of a normal um, paperweight in a sketchbook, but I'm looking for a dotted notebook that's designed specifically for dot journaling or the journaling community. So if you know of another brand that should be added to this pile, let me know and we'll talk about it. But Anyway, I think that's it. Phew, we made it to the end. Holy cow. All right. I will talk to you later and uh, stay nerdy. Bye.